Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to talk about the non sequitur show. This is not going to be a breakdown or analyzing every move. I'm just going to talk as a fan who was greatly impacted by the show and give my thoughts and feelings on everything that happened. I've been a member of the community for as long as I can remember. My book came out in 2012 and I would say I was big into the author community and I didn't go into other communities and be vocal. I wasn't vocal even in the author community for there were so many things going on in my life and after the book came out I kind of shut down. One day on the job a co-worker had mentioned Flat Earth and I remember going home and looking into it and was amazed that it never occurred to me that people would think the earth was flat. But okay. <laughs> I remember the hangouts in the community before the non sec show started. I watched the show be created in a sense and become pretty big. And at the time, I was deciding on how I was going to reforge myself, how I was going to change my attitude, be more vocal. And the show gave me a lot of information, pieces that I needed to help build my own repertoire of information and tips. I was always fascinated with psychology, science, history, and the show's motto of opinions are sacred really hooked me. Plus, they were both good together. I enjoyed them both. I'm going to say I leaned more towards Steve McRae's way of thinking. The interest that he had, the guests that he would bring on, and his interactions with other people in the community was something I looked to to find better ways of helping myself. The show was great. And I do remember a point, though, where I started noticing the show wasn't working for me. There were co-hosts coming on. And I tried to check out their content and give them a chance, but they never really gelled with me. Then the attitude and the tone of the show started changing. We started seeing less and less of Steve McRae. And I think a lot of people in the community, or a portion of them, can say that they saw things changing. They felt this tone shift. I had a disagreement with Kyle in a DM on the 22nd of May. This was right in the heat of a big uproar in the community with transgender athletes. The thread was blowing up, people on each side just letting each other have it. And Kyle and Steve are in this thread, and as Kyle's trying to promote this attitude of stop throwing the transphobe word around, we need to get the community together, opinions are sacred, that type of thing, and Steve's doing his own thing, Mr. Atheist comes into the thread and calls Steve a transphobe three times. He says he won't do the show if Steve's on it. And then goes to describe how he tried to get Steve McRae banned from an Atheist Experience affiliated show. Now mind you, Kyle's in this thread trying to fight against this transphobe 
word being thrown around. And yet he lets Mr. Atheist smear Steve. And Mr. Atheist has got a lot of followers at this point. And it's not really fair. You got to provide the evidence if you're going to say you're going to give evidence. Around the same time, I think it was the, earlier that day, Kyle had said that he was not using his private Twitter account anymore and that he would only be using the non sequitur Twitter account as his main. This set off alarm, alarms in my head and my feeling of where the show was going started growing and the worry and I was angry. So I sent Kyle a DM. And at first, I would say I was not po too polite. I was kind of pissed. I'm like, you're here trying to stop this uh, this big, huge uproar from getting out of control and it getting smears on both sides. But yet you let Mr. Atheist attack Steve without bringing it up, even in the threads when people were mentioning it. And the fact that he had used the non sequitur now as his main was troublesome. He told me to basically go fuck off. I kind of maybe deserved it looking back maybe. But within a couple of more exchanges, the tone started getting a little better. I was expressing how much I loved the show and that him and that Kyle and Steve are doing this on Twitter. So not only is Kyle getting engaged, he's engaging with Steve, letting people call him a transphobe, and I felt the shift in the relationship strong, and I think this was my way of trying to see what was going on, I wanted to see if my worries were true, and I do have the DMs, I'm not showing them, however... We started getting a little more into it. He had things going on. I told him, okay, I understand. Maybe I came up a little strong. But you're telling me it's none of my business, what goes on, but yet you're doing it on Twitter. I didn't get a good vibe from it, but at the end of it, we kind of started becoming more mellow, understanding each other. And then I told him the truth about how I felt about him in the show with Steve. And at the time... I was desperate. I was in real trouble mentally. I used the show to keep me going. Um, like a life preserver. And then I used everything that I could find to try to piece together my life. Now maybe that had more to do with Steve McRae, but Looking back, I appreciated them both the same. I really didn't see it that way. Anyway, by the end of the conversation, he said, thank you for the kind words. Maybe I could have used them a little more tact. And I just wanted to tell him, look, we are in this community. We're going to make mistakes. We're human. We see it all the time. And we can get over these things. We could work them out. After the exchange, I contacted Steve in a DM. And mind you, I had no interactions with either of them up to that point, except for Steve. I'm actually somebody who has had a couple of confrontations with Steve. Not major. But he was always polite, explained himself, I explained myself. Kyle I'd never really contacted or... Or maybe looking back, if he was using the non sequitur account, I ended my communication with Steve, just letting him know how much the show meant to me and why I care so much and I was involved in the thread. And maybe I was getting involved with both of them heated. I didn't like the fact that they were both fighting in the thread. And Anyway, I felt bad about the whole situation. So I went on Twitter publicly and thanked them both. I publicly said how much the show meant to me, that it saved my life at a point where I was really desperate, and I had pushed friends away, family away. It was a really dark time. 
And for a time I thought, okay, it'll work out. I got it riled up because of how much I loved him Bolt. And even the people on the sides, uh, uh, you know, that came in through the other channels that Kyle brought in. I think the only one I could really say I really appreciated because of her take on psychology is Shannon. But I tried to give everybody a chance and they didn't really gel with me. But you saw the community and especially them change. The, they would always look for opportunities to attack Steve and... I didn't like it, but maybe I had a bias that he was being picked on in that sense. And looking back in hindsight, you can easily see the shift in the tone of the show, the relationship between them. And I'm missing, I'm missing, I'm not even talking about people on the side that started it with them, like Bull, Bullinator, maybe even Dave McGinnis. I wish I would have planned this because I had just watched the Caffeine Corner. And now that I got my channel, I wanted to do a show on this. Anyway, so it's right after May 22nd. And from there to when it's revealed that Kyle had taken the show. You can see evidence here and there that things weren't going well. I didn't enjoy the show so much. You could tell the community was starting to pick up on things. And then it comes out, Steve is no longer on the show, Kyle gave some bullshit answer or reason, but this guy goes and gets recorded, admitting to a 50-50 deal, resorting to extortion, and you can see the attitude change, you can tell it wasn't him, he's different behind the camera than he is when he's doing the show. A little heartbreaking, I'll admit. But if Steve was in the position Kyle was in, I'd be just as hard on Steve. But the evidence was clear. And things that followed it just piled on. That showed Kyle was being deceitful. Some would say maybe even criminal behavior. And more and more, as things started happening, like uh, a meeting that they had on the phone, and then Kyle doing the non sequitur show without Steve, blatantly lying. Then he's got his former co-host and his Mr. Atheist, and they all spin the narrative. It's kind of ridiculous, sad. And I genuinely feel bad for Steve. No one should be treated that way. I don't care if you're an asshole to people. If some people will call you smug. You have good arguments. You're fair and balanced. You keep an open mind. And you admit your mistakes. Steve will do that. And I would say maybe in the past Kyle has done that. But from the day it was revealed that he was taking the show. Everything he did was a disaster. And I'll give some fans a break. They're misled. They have a bias and they love Kyle. Fine, I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is spinning the false narrative. And just constantly lying. People are showing you evidence. They're giving you, they're handing you the evidence. And you're refusing to admit it. That I don't know if I'm, I could tolerate. Anyway, looking back, maybe I would have been, I wanted to be more vocal and I wasn't, but I decided I don't want to let this continue. And I let Kyle know at every chance I could what I thought of him. And until I think he comes out and apologizes and explains what happened, I might keep doing it. I don't know if I want someone in a community or a content creator who's able to steal a show, exhibit the behavior he did, and then just keep the channel. And the ironic thing is, all he had to do was create his own channel, go to Steve and say, this is not working, let's make a deal. But what's happening now? The show's tanking. 
It's, it's dead. His reputation, his legacy is tarnished. I hope it has nothing to do with bigger issues. I hope he's healthy. I hope he is not into drugs or some wild habits. But we, I don't believe in letting people get away with that if they haven't admitted their faults and come clean. So, like I said, maybe I do have a more of a bias towards Steve, but I think I'm honest enough to say that if the roles were reversed, I'd be just as hard on Steve as anybody. So now, we're getting to a court battle that Kyle never showed up for. And I think Steve won a default judgment, but it's not finalized yet. There's still things to go over. I'm looking at a hopeful future that maybe the show can come back and capture the magic that it had for me. In either case, I'm still a huge fan of Steve McRae, his channel, the Great Debate Community Channel. And even though my first foray in being vocal had to do with the flat earth debates, I think I've come to know them both to a certain extent. More so Steve now. And he actually communicates with you. And he might be sometimes viewed as arrogant or smug. But I have friends that I love for their faults and their good points. I don't understand how someone can't be given the benefit of being human. We have bad days and good days. But if he's wrong, he's going to say he's wrong eventually. Come clean. And that's how I view it. I wish Kyle would do the same. I really do. I think a big portion of the community would forgive him. I'm not saying I would. And I didn't have a big interaction. I wasn't, like I said, vocal. I had barely any communication with them. Except for a couple of run-ins. Like I said, maybe with Steve and the, the show itself on Twitter. But general things. Uh, nothing to get make a big deal out of. So, this will be my... My story about how... The show meant a lot to me. The fans deserve much more than what Kyle gave them. Even now, they deserve some answers. Come clean and maybe get some of your respect back. In any case, the death of the non sequitur show does not have to be fatal. And here's to hoping Steve can resurrect it. So I want to say again, thank you to Kyle Curtis and Steve McRae.